and I walked to the edge of the path and it overlooked the valley below and I looked down to the right and there's a little groove probably where water trickled trickles down when it rains and I saw trash just in this in this path in there just trash up up in the hill and I didn't I didn't like that so I decided to clean up the trash I decided I was going to pick it up and I, I went over climbed down into this groove like on the edge of the cliff off the path down onto the the side where and I picked up some of the trash and then as I went to pick up a little bit more I noticed there was a bag there so I picked up the bag and I started putting the trash in the bag and there were others there was four or five things there was a water bottle um, paper plastic I think there may have even been two water bottles and I, I put them all in this plastic bag that it was uh, half buried under this under the dirt and I cleaned them off and I found another bag buried underneath the dirt and I put that in and I saw and then so I had a bag of trash and my water and while I was cleaning up the trash a gecko a small lizard ran up onto the side of, of the wall right in front of me and I said it's okay earlier in the trip this is something that I didn't mention I hate to take it back a bit but it was interesting a bird I saw a bird and it I walked around onto this abandoned tennis court and the bird started to fly away I said it's okay no I said I'll, I said no I'll not come to you and he landed instantly he came back down and stood and then I said I'm just exploring or I'm exploring just as you are anyway that was interesting to communicate with that but this gecko was on the wall and I looked at him and I said there's nothing to fear I'm here to clean up the trash and I went and I cleaned and I cleaned and then when I came back up the gecko was gone and I continued up the path and I climbed up and around I was listening to the wind and feeling everything in the sun and drinking the water bit by bit. And I got to another point where I've never been. There's, there's giant power lines and houses up above, but I followed the pathway around. There were these huge rock formations, this one in particular right in front of me, probably about 100 feet down. And it looked like a pyramid. And I said, it's a map to the stars as I saw it. I thought of the conversation I'd had with Dominic. And I looked at it and I saw the path leading towards it and I wanted to go up on top of it so I walked towards it and I followed this path towards the, the rock formation and around and then up and I thought what's what's up here what what could possibly up, be up here but I knew I just I didn't know I thought wait, wait, it's gonna be so, you know what is up there and I climbed up to the top the very top this is the tallest point in Runyon Canyon that I could see that I could be standing on and when I got there there was a butterfly and a few days ago when I made that video about the storm someone left a comment that said you, okay you saw a shooting star that could have been a butterfly and you still would have said oh it's a spiritual experience I got that comment it could have been a butterfly I got up to the top of this and there was a butterfly there and it started to fly and I just stood still I said it's okay and it came back and landed and I sat down and I started to meditate and I meditated there for about 10 minutes 5 minutes and then I got up and moved over into a better position a position where the sun was on me and I took my water bottle and a cap of the water bottle and I, and I poured a, some water into the cap and set it down said to the butterfly, this is for you. Come to me. Come to me. Put my hand out. Come to me. Come to me, butterfly, I said. And it, and it didn't. It just stood there and it put its wings up and down and up and down. And I meditated some more. Ten minutes, fifteen minutes, something like that. And I, people were walking by and, and I real, and, and, and the first two people walked by. One man said, there are no regrets. And, the, and, and then I opened my eyes out of fear, and the other one said, I regret throwing something out of the car as we were driving. And I realized if I kept my eyes closed and continued without, without reacting, the, his words, there are no regrets, would have hung. They would have, ma they would have remained. But, but when I became afraid, the other person became afraid, and then I felt that. 
So I stopped meditating. Well, I, I reached out to the butterfly again and I said, come to me, butterfly. I didn't say butterfly, I just said, come to me. Speaking to myself, speaking to, I don't know. And I just held my hand there. And that's when I realized, why? Why do I want to touch you so much? Why do I want physical contact? Why am I obsessed with this? This is the root of the problem of humanity, is that we feel this need to touch each other. There is no need. The, the butterfly came to me, but not, it, it came to my reality. It was there with me. It didn't, I didn't touch it. I didn't need to touch it. It came to me. It appeared to me. It was there. And it flew around and it landed again and it flew around and it landed again and it flew around a few times and landed and stood and stretched his wings. Finally, I decided that I'd learned something. I learned enough from this butterfly and I got up. I said, I'll see you again. And I walked off the path towards another, the other rock formation. This one's a little bigger. And I got up to the top of this one and there was another butterfly, the same butterfly, probably a different butterfly, but the same exact color, same looking butterfly was there again. I said, hello, again. And there was a rock, a square rock, a stone that I sat on, and there was a wooden post and the butterfly. And I thought, animal, plant, rock, which was a fleeting thought. But as I sat on the rock with my head, in my hands and my knees on the ground, I realized I was in the position of the thinking man, the philosophy thinking man, except he's got his chin on his hand, and I had my, my forehead on my, on my hand. So then I realized that, and I put my chin on my hand, and my neck hurt. So I said, no, 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 that was one thinking man. I'm another one. I'm a different one. So I put my head back down on my hand. And then this man and his dog walked up the hill towards me from the other direction. And... Uh, the dog was, was thirsty. Someone, someone gave the dog some water, and, and the man said, thank you. And I sat there, listening. And the man was standing there looking around with his dog. And I said to him, we are thinking men. And he said, this is a great place to do it and to look. And then his phone rang. And he said, oh. And when he reached for his phone, I said, it's, it's a distraction in a moment like this. I said, yeah, I have to turn my ringer off. I sat there a little bit longer. And then I told him about the butterfly and about the comet and about the last few days and about YouTube a little bit. He told me that his name was Drew and that the dog was Abby. And Amanda's family has a dog named Abby that looked just like this dog. And then I, I thanked him he thanked me, or both. I said, he told me to have a good day. I said, yes. And I looked at him, and I said, you as well. And then I, I, I continued on, down my descent, down.